Hello, and welcome to The Joy of Firearms. I'm your host, Pero, and today we're going to be talking about attachments. The things that you put on your guns to enhance, you know, your training. To make life a little easier. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with a warm-up. So here we are at warm-up on the last stall on the right. And we're just going to check out some of my favorite firearms here. You know, in this little case here. So first we got a M1911 uh, A1. It's a custom custom build that uh, H3VR has added into the game. Real pretty. Going off of, you know, the customs, we got a Glock 17 custom made. And then, you know, old reliable and heavy M9A3. All of these, these three right here, um, I found to be some of the more enjoyable ones. You know, makes you feel like John Wick, all these, and just I personally like M9s quite a bit. Beretta makes some pretty cool guns. Anyway, so we're just gonna dump this mag into the target, you know. Lovely. Moving on, we'll go to the left, grabbing the Glock 17 here. That was 45. This is 9. Absolutely stunning. And that was the Glock 17. And last, but least, the M9A3. Chambered in 9mm. It's a shame that they only have it in tan. But it's fine. Lovely. And one of my favorite parts about these M9s is that they got a decocker right here. Real easy to add that extra little safety feature there. Sweet. Well, now that we've gotten warm up out of the way, we can move on to appetizers. So rotating around here, we can see a little case here inside this case hopefully if it doesn't explode we have a kit this is a good kit this is a this is one to kind of get us into today this is appetizers this is a kit that I made for one specification breaching breaching clearing my specifications having a short carbine so here I got, uh, so what I've got in front of me here is an MK18 Mod 0, we got a Glock 17, and then we've got, what, a Mossberg, sawn off, what looks like it. We've got slugs for this one, I'm pretty sure, uh, oh god trying to remember hollow points hollow points 
and more hollow points for the 9 mil. We've got C4 and a clacker, uh, flashbangs, and I'm pretty sure that's it. So the reason I have this here today, which I'll go ahead and grab all of them, is to prove a point here. When making a loadout, or any kind of kit in general, you have to pay attention to, you know, what you're going to be using it for. So in this case, I was using this for breaching. And in breaching, you have to keep in mind that, you know, you're doing a lot. You know, you're, you're clearing buildings. It's, it's close quarters. And because of that close quarteredness, having, you know, running in there with a larger rifle, such as a marksman rifle or even some larger assault rifles, you're going to be banging, you know, the rifle on all these walls here. You know, you're going to be just all over the place. We don't want that. We want something that's fine-tuned to the specific, you know, specifics. And this is a great first example very simplistic there's not a lot here what i've got here is i've got i've got a flashlight a can i've got an eotech angled foregrip and that's it besides you know your six point uh, adjustable stock which comes with a lot of them but again like i said this is an mk18 mod zero um completely stock and all it is is just I threw on a couple things here. You know, I've got those protectors there. Forgot to mention. So, but this brings me into the next point of making firearms or putting on the attachments to customize them. Everything on your gun should have a purpose. Everything here has a purpose, right? Of course, you know, your optic, there's a lot of reason you'll have an optic. Sometimes it enhances, you know, sight picture, you know, it's sometimes it's easier to kind of get that target acquisition with a big old, you know, holographic sight or a red dot. Maybe it's to see further out. Maybe you've got an LPVO or a magnified optic. Maybe I even have a magnifier on here to kind of get further out there. Of course, these covers here, some may think it's just for decoration, but really it's for a lot more. This Picatinny, if you've ever held a gun with any Picatinny on it, you know it's a cheese grater. It will serrate your hands, especially after prolonged periods of combat. It will scratch you up. These covers make it comfortable in case you do C-clamps or you're kind of getting around the gun. If they're not too heavy, most of the time they're made out of polymer or even rubber. I've seen some. And all, they're, all they are there for is just comfort. Overall comfort and better control of the weapon when holding it. Flashlight? Well, identification, right? If I'm pushing through corridors with, again, a really tight package, I mean, it's, it's short. Of course, I can take off a can and, you know, and it's even shorter. But that flashlight's there for identification. If I'm pushing through tight corridors, I want to be able to see, see who's friend and who's foe, right? And then, of course, coming up to the very front, a can. And that's mainly because it's loud. It's loud indoors, especially. That sound echoes, and it, it goes far. Without proper hearing protection, it'll blow everybody's eardrums. Having a can there, while not, you know, as, as effective as some may think, it's still a great option. And this right here is compact. It's not something super crazy. There's not a lot on here. I'm trying to keep it, you know, soup, um, I'm not trying to make it super heavy, which is why there's not a lot on here. I'm not putting on too much. I've kept it very simplistic while also adding the necessary attachments to complete its role. 
taking a look at my sidearm here this is a glock 17 again completely stock there's nothing special about it apart from the can and the rounds which i'll go into later this glock 17 again not too special it's always nice to have a sidearm in case this guy runs out if you've ever done any uh, drills where you have to transition to one or the other it becomes very it becomes a necessity especially coming into close quarters because not all the time do you have to kind of swap mags sometimes it's easier to kind of pull that pistol out so yeah nothing too special we'll move on now of course for breaching this is one method of breaching um, depends on your role in a squad or you know you know a fire team it really depends on your role but generally this for me is a good alternative I'm using slugs and I'm kind of just you know pushing it up to that door bang bang it's short and compact you know lighter than most shotguns you know it's out of the way I can grab it when I need it but it's away when I don't moving on another way of breaching is C4s and a clacker this is more just for H3VR because these are you know it's super easy to kind of get them you know but they aren't I wouldn't say they're not fully realistic, but you know, I don't know. Look at look at it however you want, but not all cases would I run C4. And then of course, faithful flash grenades. You know your standard M18s, stuff like that. Easy to kind of you know throw in a room, disorient, and kind of push. You know, especially if they've got a tight hold on that you know doorway or whatnot it's nice to kind of get them away blind them for a second stun them even as for ammunition i chose hollow points um for no particular reason i feel like standard fmj is a little much or not much but i just i wanted more stopping power i guess and so I just kind of jumped to FMJ. I didn't exactly want armor piercing because I feel that armor piercing is a little much. So I'm kind of sitting myself in between FMJ and armor piercing with, you know, hollow points. I don't know. I'm not super big into ballistics. So now here comes the fun part. We get to shoot them. Starting off with the MK18. I'm just gonna drop you know a couple rounds down range and that's about it um another thing that i forgot to mention is your mags uh the glock comes standard with these these flush mags that go you know with the gun i chose these waffle mags mainly because i like the way they look but also because they are shorter you know, I don't think I need a 30-round magazine. So if I can have the gun be even more compact when coming around those corners while also still having the penetration, you know, the firepower in that hollow point, I don't feel like I need much, you know. Pretty ballsy, less ammunition, but at the same time, mags are smaller, they take up less space, and supposedly lighter, but, you know. Anyway.
Sweet. Moving on, we're gonna jump over to the Glock 17. Just kind of dump two mags downrange. Lovely. And last but not least, shotgun. Loaded in some slugs. Kind of gets through the door a lot better since we do not have a dedicated breaching round in a H3VR. That's right, only two rounds in the tube. Of course, you're not supposed to do this longer range because. really meant for that it's a breaching gun but I guess in emergencies it wouldn't hurt to have you know close quarter shotgun <laughs> all shits and giggles lovely so that's kind of appetizer right but a good introduction. So now we're getting into kind of the main course before we start integrating this into a loadout. So we're just gonna open this up. And there we have her. This is a Bren 806. You know, my, one of my favorite handguns, the M19A1. And then you got course your impact nades <laughs> flash grenades and a rangefinder now this right here was more of just something for fun right I made this as a plinking gun as some may say it's all just meant to plank with kind of have fun with it wasn't for anything too serious And then the grenades here were just, that's all silly. I don't know. And that's something H3VR. So looking in depth with this first rifle, again, this is the Bren 806, I'm pretty sure. Chambered in 5.56 by 45. Taking some PMAGs, windowed PMAGs. As you can see, armor penetrating rounds. Of course, not a very range friendly round. They're expensive. But for this build, you know, it's meant to kill. So, powerful round. Taking a look at it even further, you can tell that it kind of takes a lot of what the Scar H has. You know, that ambidextrous charging handle, kind of real blocky upper and kind of modernizes it real pretty got a nice folding stock real pretty just like that Oop. folding it back out you can see that I think oh lord I don't even know how many points not too sure anyway nice comfortable Moving further up, we've got your backup sights, which can fold out of the way when using the optic, but if the optic ever gets shot out, dies, anything like that, we can always throw up our backups. Very nice. Moving further up, we've got a magnifier and EOTech combo, a very iconic combo. Everybody loves them. I love it. It's a nice... Nice alternative to an LPVO. 
moving further up, we've got your angled foregrip, of course, that same covering on the sides, flashlight, and a webcam, which I can switch over to, but I'm not gonna for, you know, editing reasons. And then we've got, at the very top, a can. None too special. Lovely. Moving on over, we've got the M1911, M1911A1, I've got, don't even ask, okay, I know this thing doesn't have threads, so this shouldn't even be possible, like, if I take this off right now, you can see it doesn't have any threads. So this is impossible. But in H3VR, anything's possible. So, it's on there. Of course, we got, you know, red dot, RMR, whatever. And then we got a laser. And then, of course, I'm just r running uh, hollow points in this, I'm pretty sure. And then, of course, I've got a range finder, because in planking, you know, sometimes you're trying to figure out how far away a target is, so you can zero your scope. So this is kind of here for the planking reasons. And then these two shits and giggles. We'll just call it that, shits and giggles. So again, going back to what I said about being purpose-built, as I make a giant mess, everything here has a purpose. Of course, you have to keep in mind, you know, weight, making sure it's not too front heavy, rear heavy, etc. And then on top of that, you know, making sure that everything here, if it does have a purpose, is going to be used. Like, there's no reason to add the extra weight of a flashlight if I'm going to be in broad daylight, you know? It adds a lot of weight. I'm probably not going to use it, so why have it on there? If I'm not doing operations at night either, going into dark rooms, there's no re reason to have it. On the other hand, there are some things that are necessary to have. For example, having your iron sight. Iron sights or some kind of backup sight is always important. You should always have those on there because worst case scenario, you know, you got to have a way to, you know, hit your targets accurately. But again, like I said, everything here has a purpose. Everything you see here does something. It's not here for looks. It's not here to be funny. It's here because it has a purpose. Now let's shoot. Mushy trigger. Lovely magnifier. <laughs> Real intense. <laughs> but always great with an EOTech. Moving on, we're just going to jump over to this guy here. And then we'll be able to kind of incorporate what we've learned so far into a build. Very short lasted. <laughs>
So now that we've taken a look at two great examples and talked about it, let's incorporate it into a build. So the scenario here is I'm in special forces, right? We've got a building directly across that we need to clear. They've tasked me with sitting on, you know, the roof of one and taking out any targets from the windows. Anything that might cause the team a little bit of trouble. So I need something that can hit those ranges. Of course, it's not too far away, right? We're talking maybe, you know, 50, 60 meters. You know, the buildings are that far apart, you know, not too bad. You got a courtyard in front of you. You know, but you got to have that, you know, penetration to hit the targets next door. But of course, you know, you got to have that ability to go through that window and hit your target. Of course, it's still long range, so, you know, got to factor all that in. So here's what I've got for you. This is an M16A4, right? And I've set all the attachments out for obvious reasons. Nobody wants to watch me scroll through all the attachment menus ask you like Dora. No. I'm going to explain why everything is here and where I'm putting it and why I'm putting it there. So taking a look at it, this is pretty simple, right? Again, M16A4, semi and burst. Make sure the gun's empty. Lovely. We've got a fixed stock, a very long quad rail, long barrel it's a good setup so taking a look at my attachments here starting from the butt up because i like being different first thing to note is the lpvo now why am i choosing an lpvo well first off it's a great optic choice i mean just think about it you're, you have the ability to shoot all the way up there at 6x. I can jump it all the way to 6x. And now, I can hit those far away you know, ranges while still being able to adjust you know, however I need to in case you know, that 6x is a little you know, strong. I can shoot it back down to 1x so I can still use it you know, if I do need to engage closer targets. It's a great alternative to the EOTech and Magnifier, but definitely more for, you know, further ranged engagements. Going up, we've got, you know, an angled foregrip. I like angled foregrips for no particular reason. It's more of just, I like them a lot. So that's that. It's a nice place to kind of rest your hand as well. It allows you to get your thumb over in case you need to do, you know, C-clamp. It's a natural position for my hand. But again, that's personal preference. So take that as you will. You know, going further up, we've got these two. A bipod. Now, of course, bipod to steady the, steady the hand. You know, we're setting it on a building set it on the, like the ledge here kind of make sure that we're hidden accurately as for the peck box the peck box is there for several reasons one again for those closer engagements if you ever have one you know you have your red dots or you know your lasers and whatnot but also you know, if your team's running nods, you've got that, you know, IR illuminator or IR laser. That kind of helps in case you need to identify targets within windows and kind of point them out without, you know, having to lethally engage. Also, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it. And then last but not least, we've got your can, your suppressor, whatever you want to call it. Again... H3VR, when it comes to mounting things on your barrel, it doesn't factor in gas, you know, 
gas running, you know, because not all guns run suppressors or cans very nicely. Some of them might, you know, it might mess with the gas system and whatnot. Again, it depends, but just imagine this is any can that would work with 5.56 five, by 45 or this, you know, M16 platform. So, placement. Everything here generally is preference. Of course, your optic is preference. You know, you move that back and forth depending on eye relief or how close, you know, you, you rest your cheek to the, you know, the thing, you know, how long your arms are, etc., etc. Grips the same way, you know, figuring out that personal preference. Uh, suppressor, you don't have an option. It goes on the barrel, duh. Uh, your... Your bipod is about the same way. It's just kind of on there because that's the best place to put it. I mean, I wouldn't put my bipod all the way up here. That's a really weird pivot point. And then the pec box is there because if I'm using an IR illuminator and I have it all the way back here, most of the illuminator is going to be blocked when it goes to shine outward, like a floodlight. It's going to be hitting a lot of the body. So if I can push it all the way to the front, it gets it out of the way. Now, if you've seen people, some people mount it here, but the reason I'm not mounting it here, here is because it's in the way of the LPVO. So, you know, I could get it further up there, but I'd be sacrificing um, space on the LPVO. Factoring in weight, of course, pushing everything up here to balance out the weight of the fixed stock in LPVO. And then, of course, you know, your bipod helps relieve a lot of that weight, you know, while still being able to kind of move with it. So, yeah, it's a very simplistic build. There's not a lot here, but it fulfills its purpose. But you're missing something. Mags. Oh, my God. This, this little section here. Don't worry. I've got something for you. In this box... Oh boy, oh boy, what could possibly in the, be in this box? What could what could possibly be in this massive box? This ba box that is too big. A shit ton of mags, of course. So, this is every single mag in the game. For the M4 platform, I'm pretty sure. I, I, it took me a minute to look through all of them. But this is pretty much every mag in the game now for this scenario we can immediately rule out this whole side here as much as some people would love to run a giant quad mag in their marksman rifle so they can get continuous shots off when they you know when the enemy thinks you're done you just remind them that you've got a hundred rounds here or is that 50 don't know don't care this is intense, that's intense, that's intense, that's intense. There, it's a little much. So, for the sakes of it, we're going to kind of focus on this side. Even these are a little much. But, you know, you can fit them in a mag pouch a little better than you can these. But that is no reason to run them. They're big, and they take up a lot of space. When I'm sitting on an edge here, I don't want to have to worry about a crap ton of weight right here and something to collide with the wall. So we're going to kind of focus on the P mags here and these right here. You got your stand tags and your P mags, you know, excluding this one here. This one's a stand tag, but it's, you know, it's small. Small boy. So, of course, what I originally had running with this gun was this mag, of course, because I like these. I like these waffle styled or chocolate styled magazines because they look cool. They look cool. This is a good size. Because it has enough rounds to get, you know, continuous shots off, right? I can make really good, accurate follow-up shots, you know, because I have a decent amount of ammunition. But at the same time, it's out of the way. It doesn't take up a lot of space because it's not a big mag, right? Of course, some may take stand tag mags. It's not a horrible choice, and if ca in case you have those closer engagements, you can flip it to burst, and you have that ammunition there. You're not going to run out almost immediately. 
But again, this is a marksman rifle. We're not talking about something we're going to be assaulting a building with. You know, we're not you know pushing in, breaching with our team. We're we're all the way in the back supporting them. So you kind of have to factor in, you know, can this fit in my pouches? How heavy are these mags? Is it cumbersome? Does it take up a lot of space? Is it going to impede anything in general? So thinking about that, we're just going to kind of limit our um, options. So mags that hold stuff a decent amount that don't take up a lot of space. Yes, I'm bringing out those. And we're just going to throw that in the trash. So now, now that we have our options here, let's figure out what to do. Let's take a look at all of them in the gun. Oh my god, it's like it's not even there. Oh my god. Pookie. Wow, that's crazy. Anybody want five rounds of five, five, six? I mean, it ain't that bad. I mean, it gets it out of the way. I'd imagine these are light as hell. You can run them with, you know, you can stick it in your VIP pouch. That's how small they are. Probably fit two or three of these. Real cutesy. Too little, right? If I'm reloading constantly with... And then 16, I mean, I'm just not doing myself justice there. This, on the other hand, about the same. I think this holds 10 rounds, just going off of inference. If that's 5, you're at your, you know, minus that base plate. About 10. And then we have this guy. Again, not too much different. This holds, I'm sure, a tad bit more. 10 rounds, still 10 rounds, lovely. Okay, 10 rounds, but it sticks out a tad bit more. Why take a 10 round over a 10 round that doesn't take up as much space, right? So now that limits us to these three options. Again, a lot of it's preference. Now looking at size here, you can tell this one is a tad bit bigger, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go over the handguard or your grip, sorry. So it's not a horrible option. It's just looking at the other two options here, thinking about capacity and whatnot, it really isn't that much better. So let's remove it. So now we're faced with the task of which one do we like more? Now, of course, in the world of guns, not everything is about looks, also performance. And if we're thinking about weight and reducing weight so we're not carrying around this, you know, really heavy gun... We're fighting between PMAGs or Stantag. Of course, PMAGs are made out of polymer. That's what the P stands for. And generally look a little slicker. You know, better grip. I think. I don't know. I mean, they both have those indents, except this one's outer. This is inner. I would say for this specific one... Let's run PMAGs. Again, for the reasons I mentioned, they're lighter. They get the same, they do the same thing. It's just, it's lighter, you know, better grip, and it's still pretty slick. I mean, as pretty as this looks, right? That looks pretty cool. This also doesn't look too bad. Fits the whole all black criteria. So we'll run this. No, as for ammunition, well, we need something that can, well, go through windows and hit a target, you know, one shot, one kill. So, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to grab some, we're going we're gonna to grab some ammunition. So now we're asking ourselves, what do we want? Full metal jacket, hollow points, tracers, armor penetrating, incendiary, AP incendiary, Slow down, partner. Let's keep it simple. If we're talking about a building, 
with targets in it. We don't exactly know what's all in there. It all depends on, you know, what you think you're going to be facing inside there. Of course, if I'm on the very front, you know, if I'm breaching, I probably want something that can hit and drop pretty fast. So I probably want armor penetrating. And the same thing goes here. I'm penetrating windows, maybe even walls, to take out targets. I want that extra kick. So we're going to grab some armor penetrating rounds. A 5.56x45. Five, five, And now we have it. The gun to get the job done. Just gonna throw these away. Well, let's test it. Remind you of anyone? Does this range feel familiar? Does it look like something somebody would do? A certain somebody? Does the downhill slope feel reminiscent of somebody? If it does, leave a like. Here we are on the friendly 45 range. I may be asking, where's the gun? I'm gonna show you. It's right up my butt. Just kidding. It's a little stationary platform. Okay, now I'll get the gun. There it is. Just being a little shy. That's all. So we've got our armor penetrating rounds going into the 5.56. Five, no. It's going into an M16A4. You know what I mean. Anyway. So we're just, you know, just going to hit some targets, have some fun. You know how it is. Nothing too crazy. This is kind of just testing out the little platform that we've got going here. Going to aim for that hot dog up there. Oh, would you look at that? The optic is kind of... It needs to be strengthened, so we're going to try four. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, safety. Oh my god, VR aiming. <laughs> Ooh, headshot. Absolutely obliterated. God, I can't. VR shooting sucks. Drop him. <laughs> nice follow up shots. Now let's say. Oh no, there's somebody right in front of you, pit him. Oh my god, he's dead. Oh, there's another. Switch over to burst. Lovely. Shoot the can! Shoot the can! Optic? 
please work with me? Dude, I cannot see that middle cross here. That's terrible. Boom. And now for the final test. Can it hit the gong? I really doubt it can hit the gong, but it's fine. Because I believe in myself. Now, of course, for this occasion, we grabbed out the fartex. Because, of course, <laughs> gotta figure out how far away it is, duh. So we're looking at about 200 meters. So we're just gonna kind of do base zero for 200 meters. Simple enough. We're loaded and we're ready to shoot. Let's hit him. Ooh, okay. Golly, I forgot how big of a pain in the ass this is. Oh, okay. Don't do that. Buddy was, buddy was kind of upset. Flagged myself. Just gonna take a seat. It's easier like that. So now we're gonna hit her. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, as you can see, she can kill. And this is a perfect example. We're sitting on a ledge, shooting targets further out than we expected. That's 200 meters. We thought we'd only be engaging things from like, maybe not even that, hold on. 80, how, where's that? Is that seriously right in front of me, only 80 meters? That can't be right. That can't be right. Wow. That's wild that that range was only 30 meters. That range only goes out to 30 meters. Huh. Well, it, it, it hits out there. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know that kind of getting into this is uh, was rough, and I know I didn't cover everything. But uh, feel free to leave, you know, some comments, things I need to change, because I plan on making a whole, a whole series of these. So if you have anything you want me to go in depth about, any kind of drills that you want to see or anything like that I'd love to do them so if you can give me some ideas I'd love to incorporate them into the world of H3VR until next time I'm your host Pero and this has been the joy of firearms episode one and hopefully god I'm not trying to make several seasons of this so this is just going to be episode one of season one. Thank you.